What's up VFAM, your boy Juan Valdez back with another video and today I'm going to be sharing with you guys three mistakes you could be making with your Facebook ads for your Shopify dropshipping business. So for those of you guys that are brand new, you may or maybe you haven't heard about my story but basically my business partner Samir and I got started with an e-commerce and dropshipping just as an experiment. We decided when we first got started we were going to split the workload 50-50. So I take care of you know the back end, I take care of setting up the stores, finding the hot products, getting everything good to go and Samir takes care of all the Facebook marketing, you know, running all the ads, Instagram ads and all that great stuff. So I'm actually going to have him you know, come in in this video and actually share with, share with you guys three possible mistakes you could be making within your Facebook ads based on, you know, our experience when we first got started, mistakes that we were making that we realized now that we could have easily prevented. I wanted to simply show you guys, uh, you know, what, so what the numbers are looking like for the month with some of the things that, you know, I've been going over with you guys, literally the same exact strategy. So uh, just to pull this up, you can see right here, so we're at about 38,000. We're about 38,000 for the month and it's only the 14th. Well, we're not even half, we're almost halfway through the month. I just simply thought I'd share that with you guys. I want to be completely transparent with you guys, letting you guys know kind of what happens on you know, day to day and kind of how we run our business. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go get Samir, find out what he's doing and get him to drop some some of that Facebook ad knowledge for you guys. So, all right guys, so I'm back and I'm here with the man himself, the man, the myth, the legend, Samir Chabane. For those of you guys that don't know Samir, make sure you follow and you check out his channel. I'll post a link to it in the description and you can also pop up and see his channel here. As you guys can see, Samir got a brand new hair. If you see some of his previous videos. It's just videos. the lighting, bro. It's not even my hair, dude. It's just the lighting? The, yeah, it's just the lighting. It makes okay. my hair look like that. Three mistakes that anyone just getting started that they could potentially be making with their Facebook ads and, you know, it's just some reasons as to why it may or may not be working for them. Yeah, I would say one of the main mistakes is, is exactly that. They're not launching enough campaigns. Mm -hmm. So for any of you guys out there that are looking to get into Facebook ads or, you know, you're already in it, but just not really working out too well for you. It might actually be the simple fact that you're not doing enough campaigns, right? You're not uh, experimenting enough. Okay, so we have the first one. You need to test a lot more campaigns. On average, what would you say for anyone getting started? Uh, how many campaigns should they be testing a week? Yeah, I would say it honestly depends on, on their budget. Mm -hmm right because the budget is often what is a little bit tight when people are like first getting started like e-commerce drop shipping yeah let's do uh for people that have you know small budget something like maybe a few hundred dollars to spend and people that may have a thousand dollars to spend okay i would say if you have a couple hundred bucks uh you definitely want to experiment with you know tinier budgets you can even launch an ad for as little as five dollars that's what we help all of our students do uh, in the P2P accelerator, which I'm sure you're gonna have a link for yeah. below or something like that. So if you do have a plan, you know, that kind of shows you how to launch Facebook ads, like you have somebody guiding, you may be a friend, um, you know, a business partner, kind of like how you and I, you know, mm -hmm. were able to, uh, for, cause like I didn't learn, you know, I showed you my Facebook ad account when we were first getting yeah, started yeah, drop yeah. shipping. Um, and it was negative 12 grand. Yeah, this, that was right? absolutely insane. So, usually like, yeah, usually everybody has this learning curve to go through. So obviously our goal is to help all of you guys watching, like shorten that learning curve because Samir himself, he actually spent 12 grand just testing, yeah. testing, testing all these different things. I don't and even know where I Did you make that anything 12. back on that or? Um, honestly, I would say probably like, hundred two hundred dollars worth of sales wow. that I generated but wow. let me answer the question because I'm sure everybody's like what is that number I would say if you have a couple hundred bucks I would say like four campaigns a day okay because obviously would you wouldn't want to run and let run too long if they're not profitable mm -hmm. if they're not getting any traction shut them off launch a new campaign new product whatever it is you want to do mm -hmm. so um, and then for people that have a little bit more of a budget, a little bit more bucks to play with. I would say you would want to double that, maybe you know. Mm -hmm. So I would say like eight a day, okay. and you can you know you can tell how good an ad can you know is doing by you know really tiny budget. Like you don't have to spend a couple hundred bucks mm -hmm. on a campaign to know if it's a success or failure. Like I think everybody should just have a, a pain threshold, mm -hmm. so they know that. And this is something that um, you know Alex Smear taught me is like just know when you got to get out like when people when make investments whether it be in crypto stock market they just don't have a pain threshold so 
they're like, I'm just gonna invest, but everybody should have a number where, hey, if I lose this much, so you're done. I'm done. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I would say when it comes to Facebook ads, you have to have a specific strategy in mind. And oftentimes that strategy doesn't unfold right away, right? It's, how do I explain it best? Like when you get started with Facebook ads, you have no custom audiences, you have no uh, pixel data. So you're starting off fresh, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and the only way that your conversions get better and um, you know your cost per purchase or whatever KPI you're trying to aim for gets better and more effective is the more data that you get, right? Mm -hmm. So like your cost per conversion is gonna get cheaper, hella cheaper when you have a lookalike audience of buyers. You got it. You know, got but it. the only way you do that is if you go through that initial phase of like building the data and feeding the Facebook pixel. We decided to take everything that we learned from pretty much step A to Z from $12,000 experiments all the way to, you know, learning from high level mentors like Ty Lopez, Alex, and all these guys. And we put everything that we learned inside the P2P dropshipping accelerator. Uh, and all it is, is pretty much just a blueprint that you guys can use to save you guys from having to go through a, such a painful learning curve. You guys can test it out. We've already had numerous students come through and save a ton, a ton of time, you know, money and just mistakes because obviously they, they got the proper blueprint but a third mistake that you see because i know you get tons of messages daily day in and day yeah. out from different people asking about you know, product research how do you test products all these different things what would you say would be the last thing or last possible mistake that you see a lot of people making so i would say another thing is that people don't really know how much they should be uh spending on a customer right mm -hmm. so because they don't know their average customer lifetime value, excuse me. What I mean by that is if you know that each customer you bring in is potentially worth, um, you know, $50, right? When they go through your upsell sequence, whatever it is, maybe the initial product that you're selling though is only, it's a free plus shipping product, right? So free plus shipping, your profit margin is probably not gonna be huge on that, but if you have a great upsell sequence, great email sequence, mm -hmm. you know, maybe even downsell sequence, post-purchase type deal, you're gonna find out, you know, just like we did after, you know, kind of doing it without it, and then, you know, coming to the realization that we can actually spend a little bit more than initially, we initially thought on a customer, because our upsell sequence was mm -hmm. so big, our email was so good. So we could, we then realized, hey, like, we don't have to go for just, $5 purchases, mm -hmm. we can afford 10, $15 purchases because our upsell sequence, again, like I said, you know, has, right? So like every ad campaign that wasn't converting for $5, we were shutting off, but then realized, hey, we can actually get a lot more customers through the front door if we spent 10, $15. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, that, that, that makes sense, yeah. that makes sense. That's a little bit higher level. I mean, a lot of people would need to kind of have some experience in the game mm -hmm. uh, because that just goes to show, right, the front end versus like the back end like we you know yeah. we always um, try to emphasize that's part of the yeah that's part of i have a one of my the previous videos that i had was talking about the 2018 strategy that we had yeah that has led to us having the results that we have so far and a lot of that does come from having a back end system in place because again if we know just like samir said that we can pay us or not for a customer so i'm just yeah. trying to wrap my head around it as if i'm one of the viewers yeah so if you're one around. of the viewers right like you're gonna launch a facebook ad and you're mm -hmm. gonna be like okay the product that i'm trying to promote is twenty dollars okay right so the product costs uh five dollars okay now i can spend up to fifteen dollars Right? For the customer to the get customer, them to buy, yeah, to, to mm -hmm. get them to buy, and then I'll be break even. Um, yeah, I'll be break even type deal because mm -hmm. product costs five, cost for the customer costs you fifteen. Mm -hmm. uh, now, if you have no upsell sequence, uh, if you have no email follow up sequence that pushes the, the average customer, you know, to uh, twenty dollar purchase being like sixty dollars okay. or eighty dollars, mm -hmm. and you can do that through, you know, again post-purchase upsell sequence. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do that through email follow-up sequence, yep. abandoned card sequence, and all these cool things. Um, and so now you can go from being able to spend only $15 to, hey, now I can spend, you know, $30 on a customer. Because I know I'll still be profitable exactly. based on that. So that and, and that's what sense. really all the big giants do, right? That's yeah. what all the big giants do that have, you know, proactive, for example, or, you know, all these uh, white teeth smiling versus mm -hmm. like, Yep. The bigger ones versus like the small ones. The bigger ones understand that they can, they can spend more on the front end because they know that for each customer they get into a monthly subscription, mm -hmm. he it's the average lifetime of them is like five months, and then five months for a sixty dollar recurring membership. Mm -hmm. You know that's like what uh, 
three hundred dollars. I'm with you. I'm not the best at math. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, so now they can afford to spend a lot more on that front end acquisition. Uh, that's good to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's super good to know. So, you know, I hopefully I hope you guys got value from me bringing some here on to share some of the things. Some of the strategies that we use for our e-commerce business that you guys can also implement to yours. Pain. First one was not enough there you experimentations go, going on. Second one was the fact that yeah, your your budget should be experimenting four or five times to kind of tag along with that first first one. Um, the second one we talked about. The second one was having a strategy in place. Yeah, having a strategy in place that might unfold after a month or two of you know data. Mm -hmm. um, and then the third one is knowing you know. Your customer what is, value, your whatever your customer is worth. Exactly. So that way you know how much you can spend per customer. Got it. There you go, guys. So uh, I'll make sure to, again, post the link in the description to Samir's channel. Make sure you check him out. He has a ton of great videos going over a lot more, you know, Facebook ad advice, you know, for any anyone just getting started or for anyone that's more advanced. So make sure you check him out. And again, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, join the VFAM, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.